Welcome back. In the workshop this week, we're taking a very quick look at Shepak's 50 litre shop vac with a 100 mil hose. That's coming up next. Well, once again, it seems that uh, a tool that only ever appeared in the background and the very distance of one of my videos has generated a large number of questions and inquiries. So I thought I'd just uh, answer some of those in a video, much like I did with the planar thicknesser before, uh, about this little guy. This is the Shepak HA1000. Uh, despite the name, it's an 1100 watt 50 litre shop vacuum. Uh, it's basically a 50 litre metal bin with a motor in the lid, uh, a cartridge filter that sort of encases that completely, and a paper bag filter that folds around that, so a little bit belt and braces there. Shepak claims that the, uh, this unit will filter down to half a micron, so not quite as fine as some that you might be used to, but they do state that it's suitable for MDF and it certainly seems to collect the vast majority of the dust from the tools that I've used it with. It comes with a couple of metres of 100 mil heavy duty hose like this and a very, very stingy uh, two metres of mains cable. Uh, this is one of my pet hates. Uh, we see this time and time again with tool manufacturers and it's not just uh, at the entry level but from quite major players too. Um, they seem to cheap out on the mains cable length. They can't really believe that manufacturers are actually sitting around thinking, yeah, two meters, that's plenty for everyone. Um, I'd love to know how much they're saving by doing this because with the quantity that they must be buying, they can only be saving pennies and it just produces a, a bad experience for the user and possibly unsafe as well as you're almost always gonna be using it with an extension cord. With that irritation aside though, it does however come with a variety of step-down connectors for the hose which are very useful to adapt it to other tools. In use I found the suction at 100mm with the planar thicknesser to be okay. Uh, it certainly captured the bulk of the shavings and honestly that's the only 100mm outlet machine I have so it could just be a, a less than stellar dust collection performance, dust extraction performance from that particular planer. But if you step this hose down to 65mm for, say, the table saw, or 50mm for the bandsaw, or even 36mm for the chop saw, it's absolutely fantastic. It, it would suck the chrome off a bumper, I swear. Uh, what I did find, though, is that if you go below that, down to 27mm, say, it does choke a little bit, and it doesn't perform so well. So something to bear in mind if you have the option of using a 27mm or 36mm hose, I'd go for the 36mm every time. Other than that, there's not a whole lot to say about it, to be perfectly honest. Uh, so far, it's working extremely well without any problems at all. Uh, one thing that is missing, though, from the spec is a noise level. So let's just test that now. Although, to be honest, the noise of this is likely to be drowned out by the noise of whatever timber is being cut or machined. Okay, so as always with these quick tests, nothing terribly sophisticated sophisticated about this. Just a simple phone app, a uh, decibel reader, and we'll have it exactly a metre away from the unit on the bench. And we'll see what sort of readings we get. We'll just run the unit, run the back for a few seconds, and we'll see what sort of readings we get from it. So we've got about 18, 19 dB at rest with absolutely nothing going on. Well, that peaked at about 73, 74, and then it sort of settled down to a steady 71, 72. So that's actually not bad at all. It makes me wonder why Shabak don't state it in the, uh, in the specification. Uh, anyway, yeah, interesting. Now, just for balance, the air scrubber that I have in my ceiling here is 55 dB when it's running. And the Aldi and Festool vacuums, when I tested them last year, I think it was, were... 65 and 67 dB, so this is significantly louder though. As I said earlier, it's likely to be drowned out by whatever tool you're using, whatever timber you're machining, so we're firmly into the realms of needing hearing protection when you're using this gear. 
Now I bought mine from Tool Station for £114 as they could deliver the next day. There are others, for example, from SIP at around the £100 mark that look very similar. I don't actually know what the differences are. Uh, the, certainly the, the specs seem very similar. And if you've got one of these similar models, then I'd love to hear about it, about what you think about it. Uh, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, what I would say though is that it's, it's reasonably compact, but it's certainly not as small, including the motor and handle. It's uh, 700 mil high. It's about 400 mil across. And when it's empty, it weighs 14 kilos. That will go up very quickly as it fills. So if you're gonna move it around a lot, and in many workshops, particularly smaller ones like mine, you need to be able to take the extractor to the tool. It might be worth considering a mobile base for it. And I think that's one of the things that I'll be making for it soon. Now I've been using this as a standalone unit, though obviously it would make a good power unit for a fully plumbed in and cycloned up dust collection system. My YouTube pal Keith Brown over at Rag and Bone Brown has done just that, albeit with a different extractor as the main power unit. And I'll put a link in the video description down below to Keith's video. But whether you're using it as a standalone unit like I am or as part of a system, so far at least, I really can't fault it for the money. And I think I'll leave it there for today. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks so much to my Patreon supporters. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more weekly workshop videos and don't forget to check out the links down in the video description below to all the good stuff. Uh, that's it though for this week. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.